Hey guys, so I'm in the kitchen as promised and I'm making some breakfast potatoes even though it's way after breakfast time. Some spinach, some eggs. Yeah, let me show you how the eggs are doing. These are just the simplest scrambled eggs, but we want to make them with only one teaspoon of oil. And that's going to be a challenge, but if you use a little bit of oil and just put a lid on it and add the cheese on it, it will look like this. So I just want to show you guys how to cut these breakfast potatoes into very thin slices. I used to think that you need a mandolin for this, but I don't have one. I'll probably have to get one. But you can just cut them with a nice sharp knife and then season them. Because remember, we're not using a lot of oils. These are normally really fried, like fried in a lot of oil. So you have to really season them to get the same flavor with less oil, less calories. So you just put the, all the um, seasoning in there and, and mix it. Make sure you get it into each and every slice. These are the breakfast potatoes, guys, and you don't need a lot of oil for these. Um, I got this recipe from, uh, I think it's Stephanie Macedo. She's the one who does these, but these are just, you know. Okay, so as you can see, they're starting to kind of brown up on there. Don't be scared. It's not like a burn because, you know what Gordon Ramsay says, no color, no flavor. So the color is what's going to bring out the flavor in the potatoes. And we're trying to make the best that we can since we're not using a lot of oil. Yeah, I wanted to have it separate, but I just changed my mind. I think it'll be better if I have it like a sandwich. And these potatoes are so delicious, guys. You have no idea. So delicious. And I like to put a little bit of mayo on my sandwich. And this is my coffee that I use. Now I've got chicken breasts and peppers from the garden. Also green onions from the garden. And I don't know what to make with them. I thought of making like a Philly cheese steak with chicken breasts. I'm thinking of making the chicken, like chicken fajita uh, with tomato rice. I'm thinking of making tortillas also. So, I don't know. When I start filming, you're going to know. Uh okay, so I'm here. I'm thinking, let me start prepping so I can cook this rice. <sighs> Guys, I want something with cheese. Okay, I want something yummy. I don't know what's going on with me. I want something yummy with cheese. What do I do? I'm out here in the garden, guys. So this is the garden I speak of all the time. Look at this red lettuce. And I got some spring onions up there. Tomatoes. So when I tell you that I'm growing tomatoes, don't think that it's a lie guys I'm really growing tomatoes out here this is my ca curly kale and I've been doing so bad with this guys it's not even that much I can't eat it all maybe because I mean I'm not that much of a kale fan but okay these are peppers 
I actually harvest my peppers from, from this row of plants. Okay guys, look at these big old onion. This is what they call king onions. They have like huge bulbs underneath there. And we're gonna harvest them soon. And this is where I harvest my peppers. This is baby spinach. I know it doesn't look so baby, but this is the baby spinach that I have for breakfast. And this is just an empty space where we harvested a whole lot of broccoli. A whole lot of broccoli. So we finished all of it. Okay, so this is what I picked, guys. I have some garlic chives. These smell amazing. And these are some spring onions green onions whichever and i'm gonna make something nice and cheesy <sighs> this is what i decided to do guys i decided to make some tortillas i told you i make some tortillas from scratch right so i'm gonna show you in a minute so what you do is you put 200 grams of cake flour uh why cake flour Hang on, let me get it. Okay, this is the type of cake flour right here. Gloria cake flour. Why? It's because, I don't know if you can really see. Um, it's out, so I can't really show you, but it's got so, it's so low calorie. And then we use, I normally use natural yogurt, guys, but this is what my husband brought home when I asked him for some yogurt, so. And yeah, like this. So this is what I used. So it's not quite, you know, because I ran out, but it's almost 200 grams. It should make about eight tortillas. Each of them should be 45 calories each. So, Greek yogurt. As you can see, I've made a well in the center. And then you have to make sure that you initialize your scale. So here to zero. And then you put your Greek yogurt in here, right? And as you're putting it in, you're supposed to be looking at your scale to make sure that you only put in 100 grams, okay? No more, no less. So I reached 103, but it's still all right. And we have to Mix it, mix it, mix it until, you know, it's all incorporated. This, this is a two ingredient dough, by the way. So I'll show you how it looks in a minute. Okay, so this is what it looks like, guys. It's going to, it's not going to come together. Oh, oh by the way, I ended up in um, putting about 50, maybe 30 more grams of yogurt because it was too dry. But this is what it will end up looking like. But you have to keep on kneading it until it comes together. I'll show you what it looks like. So this is what the dough ends up looking like. You know, if you've ever played with Play-Doh, and I'm using my counter for this because I found that it's easy. You can use a board if you want to, but I prefer, if you have a granite counter, just use that one. Um, yeah, if you've ever played with Play-Doh, you know how to make this shape. Because we're gonna cut it into eight equal pieces. Okay, I lied. I ended up cutting into 10 pieces because we just want to make some medium tortillas. We don't want to make like those big old, you know, those big tortillas. Okay, this is better. Right? So, I'll show you how you roll one of them. Okay, so. This is what you do when you're about to roll. And I'm trying to film and roll at the same time. So what you do is you first flatten it like this. So easy. I have a rolling pin, but if you don't have a rolling pin, you can use anything with this shape. I remember growing up, we used to use like Coke bottles and we would make awesome pastries with it. So don't feel limited because you don't have a rolling pin, especially in this quarantine period where it's so difficult to get stuff, you know. 
So, I'm trying to show you here with one hand. You just have to roll it until it's extremely flat. And don't be alarmed if it starts to stick. Make sure you flour your surface so that it does not stick to the counter. Here we go, guys. This is it. This is what it looks like. Even if you feel like it's too thin, keep going, but just make sure that it's, it doesn't stick to the surface. You see that? If you're too, you know, particular about your edges, you can take a knife and you can just cut off the little, you know, uneven edges. For me, I don't feel like it's necessary. But if you want to, you can cut off the edges, you know. But all I see is the edges going from the counter into my stomach. So I don't really care. So when it comes to cooking these tortillas, you have to just heat your pan. Um, you know, some people use some um, spray. I don't think I still have any more cooking spray. Lord, why is it so okay like this? So when you heat your pan like this, I don't think you really need any oil. And with these type of tortillas, because we don't have any oil in them and stuff, they can tend to dry up. So what you do is, you just do this. Heat it, just, you know. If you have a cast iron uh, skillet, it will be good. So just 30 seconds on each side would definitely be ideal. You see that? I flipped it. So when it starts to bubble up on the other side, that's when you flip it. And these ones don't get too brown and stuff like that, but when you fill it with stuff, with chicken, with mincemeat, you can make some bomb quesadillas from these too. I'll show you one of these days how I make my bomb quesadillas. So 30 seconds on the other side, they should be done. This one should be done. So I'm going to make the other ones. Uh, Alrighty guys, so I finished with the tortillas. Now I got my chicken breasts. So this is just chicken breasts from the you know supermarket. Regular chicken breasts cut into strips. As you can see, I cut them into strips, right? And then I added my seasoning, the same one that I use some garlic, um, a little spice for mints, um, a little salt, a little bit of salt, and then I'm gonna mix it up. And you know, one thing that I like to do is use chicken fat. This is chicken tallow. I uh, I boil the chicken, and then I I um, take the broth, and then when you cool the broth, what is left is this tallow on top. Let me do this. Yeah, what is left is this tallow on top. So what you do is you spoon it off and you keep it. Let me tell you why, because um, it adds extremely great flavor. So use chicken tallow to cook your chicken and it's just going to add more flavor to the dish. Sizzling, look at that. So I'm gonna cook this until it browns. So I let it cook <clears throat> until it kind of browned on the other side. As you can see, you know, there's still some raw pieces in there. So I'm gonna let it cook for about seven minutes on the other side as well. And then I'm gonna put some peppers. So these are the chives that I got from the back. And I cut them up with my little kitchen scissors. You don't need to use a knife, you know. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them at the end, towards the end, maybe the last minute or two, because you don't want to cook them down all the way. Because when you put them in your tacos, you do not want them to be all the way cooked because they're going to add an insane garlic flavor. Okay? Insane. And I'm also going to be making a salad. This is lettuce, again, from my garden. I haven't cleaned my counter yet, guys. I think I'll just clean it all up at the end. So I'm gonna have also a salad with the tacos. So I threw the peppers in there. I'm just gonna stir it to make sure that they cook 
down, but you don't want them to be too cooked because you still want that peppery flavor in there. When the meat is cooked, you can taste, taste the seasoning so that, you know. By the way, this is one of my tongs that got messed up and I like to use it to stir stuff. I do have like nice stirring spoons, but this is just does it for me. Uh, I'm adding some tomatoes just to make you know a nice little sauce with it. Not to you don't want it to be too saucy. Okay, but then the tomatoes just do add a little acidity to it. Um, yeah. Okay, I added some green onion to it. This, these are not the chives, guys. This is just the green onion. So this one, you can let it cook down, but not that long, maybe about five minutes. And then, you know, I went back to my spatula for stirring. Look at that. It smells amazing, I have to say, guys. So now it's time for the chives. We got only about two or three minutes left of cooking because I, you know, you don't want to overcook chicken breast because that's when it becomes tough, you know. And then when it becomes tough, it's just not good, you know. Take this out of there. Like I said, you don't want to uh, overcook chicken breast because that's when it becomes really tough. And I added the chives, finally, for the last minute or two of cooking. Don't overdo it, trust me, because when you put the cheese and the, all your different sauces in there, it's going to be amazing. Okay, so this is the moment of truth, guys. These are my tortillas, as you can see. The moment of truth. Aren't these lovely? Nice and thin. You know, you might think, oh, why not just buy them from the store? Don't buy them from the store. Remember, this is diet food, okay? Each one of these has only 68 calories. I don't know how much those ones from the store have. And I'm having it with 150 grams of the chicken and 25 grams of cheese. I told you I really wanted cheese. You know what I feel like making? I feel like making a quesadilla, but let me not do too much. Let me just do what I'm doing. This is so difficult to do with one hand. Should I be doing this? I'll show you when I finish. Okay, so I don't use sour cream. I just use the Greek yogurt. It actually tastes quite good because I, um, I want to offset, you know, the over salting of the meat that I did because I had forgotten that I put it in a brine. So I thought I was going to have a, a salad with this, but I'm not, guys. I'm just going to have it um, put the lettuce into the taco, okay? I like this. What I want to do, you know what I should have done? Let me do this. Maybe I could save it. This is what I want to do. I want to put some cheese on first, and then I want to melt the cheese. Yeah, I should do that. Okay, guys, look at this. Doesn't this just look delicious? Look at that. So I am going to put the lettuce a little bit, you know, just to add more volume to it. It's going to go well with the cheesiness. It's going to go well with... Just to make me feel like I'm eating more than I actually am. You know? 